بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين <تصفيق> لا سيما بقية الله الحجة بن الحسن في الله الراح العالمين واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أبد الآبدين <تصفيق> ودهر الداهرين <تصفيق> اللهم كل وليك الحجة بن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه يا هذه الساعة في كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقادا وناصرا <تصفيق> ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكن ارضك طوعا وتمتع فيها طويلا برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين. قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاظمين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين والذين اذا فعلوا فاحشه او ظلموا انفسهم ذكروا الله فاستغفروا لذنوبهم ومن يغفر الذنوب الا الله ولم يصروا على ما فعلوا وهم يعلمون صدق الله العلي العظيم so the holy book of quran has the power to manufacture human beings when we go to ahlul bayt's narration or narrations we see that when they talk and describe believers, they say, نَفْسُهُ مِنْهُ فِي تَعْبُ وَالنَّاسُ مِنْهُ فِي رَاحَ That his nafs, he, he put himself in hardship so people can feel safe of him, can rest, they don't fear him. Why? Because a human being, who is created by the Holy Book of Allah, who is disciplined by Almighty God, is a person who is willing to sacrifice, who is willing to forgive, who is willing to, to give, who is willing to help. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do. He doesn't simply wants us to go to jurisprudence books and laws and try to act in accordance to that. Not only that, of course, a husband or a wife, a husband duties or a wife duties are not that substantial. But what about manners and akhlaq? Of course, it is very substantial. Sometimes wives and husbands do to each other more than their duties. Why? Because they are human beings. Okay? They are human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks in verse 134 of chapter 3, Surah Al-Amran, about muttaqeen. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَعَدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Hasten towards your Lord's forgiveness and a paradise as vast as heavens and the earth. Prepared for the pious people. And who are the pious people? الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء those who spent in ease and adversity when time is hard one and when time is normal time when we face pandemic recession they still spend they still spend on poor people good deeds and when the time it's easy they still spend as well so a pious people is not someone who only spent when we are in normal situation rather he will give even if he is in the hard situation <laughs> والكاظمين الغيظ and those who suppress their angers 
والعافين عن الناس and excuse the fault of the people والله يحب المحسن of course indeed Allah loves the virtuous those who are good to people once a Bedouin guy went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and told him that and asked him in the day of judgment would Allah himself talk with us and sometimes ask us about what we did and the Prophet replied yes and then the Bedouin guy laughed and the Prophet said why you are laughing he said then it would be very easy he said why the Prophet said why he said in Karima a generous person if he gets the upper hand he will use mercy he will use mercy this is God when he got of course always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the upper hand but if he start to talk with people and to ask him why you did this and why you did that in the kirima of course he will not forgive people like yazid and muawiyah no because this is inappropriate because they were cruel people killed thousands of innocent people but what about the rest those who are not that evil of course and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like that of course and pious people when we come to this verse those who use mercy against people's faults one day Imam Sadiq was sitting and then somebody came to the Imam and told him I owe someone some amount of money and he kept chasing me for that money and Imam Sadiq told his companion okay tell him to come to me and apparently both of them were followers of Ahlul Bayt and when Imam Sadiq saw so that person he told him why why are you are chasing him down just give him some time he said well I'm not doing anything wrong I'm only asking for my right for my money and Imam Sadiq got angry and he said do you know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about su al hisab bad treatment in the day of judgment? Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't oppress us, won't oppress anyone. This is very obvious. Su al hisab means al mudaqah fil hisab. He only gets very accurate. Okay? When you say, okay, Allah. You know the story of that person who went to Yusuf, Joseph in the prison and told Joseph that uh, I see myself that squeezing uh, grapes for my Lord. Imam alayhi salam, uh, the Prophet, Prophet Joseph told him that okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught me how to explain dreams and you will get released and you will get close to the king and when the government wanted to release that person prophet joseph told that person when you go 
to the king, tell him that an innocent person is in the prison. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَأَنْسَاهُ الشَّيْطَانِ ذِكْرًا Okay. When he went out, he forgot. And straight away, angel Jibra'il descended upon Prophet Joseph and started to talk to him. Ya Yusuf, من الذي أنجاك من إخوتك? Who? Who rescued you? from your brothers when they decided to kill you. Prophet Joseph straight away realized what was happening. He said, Allah. And then again, <clears throat> Prophet or Angel Jibra'il asked Yusuf, okay, who rescued you from the well? And then, Prophet Yusuf took some dust and put that dust in his mouth. And he replied, Allah, God, who rescued you from Egyptians, women? He said, God. He said, okay. You see that God, the creator, rescued you, helped you. And now you put your request to a normal human beings? He told him, to remember you. When he get close to the king, that's why you have to be punished and stay some more years in the prison. I can remember once I used to go to my uncle's uh, classes, tafsir classes, long time ago. Probably I was 13, 14 years ago. And he said <coughs> that uh, apparently... In, in Hebrew was seven words, alphabetic words. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for each single alphabetic word put Prophet Joseph in the prison for one year. So he was, he stayed in the prison for seven years for asking normal human beings. To remember him when he goes to the king. So anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disciplines us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his book wants to create and manufacture human beings. You get the upper hand. Just forgive. Al-Afu and al We have in our narrations that the best attitude and manner, one of the best attitude and manners is to forgive while you get the power to retaliate. To do the same thing that they did to you. If someone humiliates you, and you get the chance to humiliate them or him or her. Just thank God that now you have the upper hand and don't do anything. And you will be considered as pious people in accordance to this verse. So, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ والله يحب المحسنين والذين إذا فعلوا فاحشة أو ظلموا أنفسهم ذكر الله and pious people are those who if they commit any sin or oppress themselves put themselves in danger situation against Almighty God's pleasure and anger ذكر الله they suddenly remember Allah سبحانه وتعالى فاستغفروا لذنوبه and straight away, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness. They don't get arrogant. Yes, I have the right to do. I can do. I'm a person. No one can punish me. 
No. This is called أَخَذَتُهُ الْعِزَّةُ بِالْإِثْرِ like someone who kills an innocent person, like Saddam Hussein. May God curse him. He killed millions. And even when he was in the court, he used to stand up and say that what I did was right. What I did was right. Okay. Pious people are not like that. If they do wrong, they apologize. If they commit sins, they repent and ask for Almighty God's forgiveness. And who can forgive sins but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And who do not persist in what they have committed. Sometimes someone just backbite someone else. And sometimes that person keeps backbiting that person. Keeps oppressing that person. Keeps uh, harming that person. Keeps harming that person. I'm not sure if you see, I've seen in movies, sometimes they actually bring that uh, to the scene that someone okay does one single wrong action and then that one one single wrong action leads him to another wrong action and the second one leads him to the third wrong action and etc this is the nature of sins they leads the doer to more wrong actions. And this is the problem. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes pious people, human beings, that they do not persist in what they have committed while they know that this action is wrong. Probably someone uh, does something wrong. But he doesn't know that this action is wrong. Okay? But if someone knows that this action is wrong, he has to avoid it. <clears throat> and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ula'ika jaza'ahum maghfiratun min rabbihim wa jannatun tajri min tahti lanharu khalidina fiya wa na'ma ajrun. I mean, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put these people in his heaven. And of course, if we want to learn from anyone, we have to learn from the Prophet and his progeny. We have to learn from Prophets of Allah and their sincere companions, how they used to act, how they used to behave themselves, how they used to put themselves in hardship to give the chance to people who live around them to live securely without feeling any danger. For instance, the rights of neighbors. You know, Islam talks about the right of neighbors. In Australia, usually neighbors, especially in countryside, they are keen to each other because it's not an easy task for someone to buy and sell house uh, in Australia because of the tax and uh, and etc so usually if someone buys a house it will stay there for the next 20 years so his neighbors will be his neighbors for next 20 years so if he tolerates them he tolerates them because he will receive back the same uh, think they will tolerate him as well because if you live in an area for 20 years it's going to be very hard for you to avoid all uh, inappropriate actions but they have that manners they try to tolerate each other and this is good but in Islam no it says that if your neighbors bothers you 
You have to tolerate that. And to pray for him. And just, this reminds me with Lady Fatima. When she used to pray for her neighbors all night. Till Imam Hassan Mushtaba told her, Oh my mom, I just saw you that praying for our neighbors. What about ourselves? And Lady Fatima said, Al Jar Maddar. No, we have to pray for our neighbors to be good to them before we try to drag goodness to ourselves. And those same neighbors neglected Lady Fatima when her house was ambushed by the enemies of Islam. Yes. So Lady Fatima used to be keen towards them, but they used to be evil. When they want to pay back what Lady Fatima did to them. Peace be upon her. Anyway, so Quran has very clear message to us. You have to be as nice as possible to people, to human beings. You have to suppress yourself so people can feel secure towards you. You have to control your angers. Control your feelings. Some might say, okay, does Islam want us to suffer? No. Rather, Islam wants us to fasten our desires. This is what Islam wants us to do. To fasten our desires. To be a good human beings. To follow prophets. Of Allah. This is what Islam السلام, wants us to be. And this is how Islam uh, manufactures uh, human beings. When I recited Wal Kalimin al Ghayd, those who control their angers, I remem remembered a story from Imam Sadiq. السلام, once Imam Sadiq told one of his servants, she was a lady. That don't take my infant baby to the roof. So, very clearly Imam Sadiq told his servant to avoid taking his infant baby to the roof. And once Imam Sadiq entered the house and she was climbing the stairs with the baby to take the baby to the roof. <coughs> <coughs> When that lady saw Imam Sadiq, she scared and the baby fell down off her hand and he passed away. So literally, she uh, did not listen to Imam Sadiq's orders. And what happened? Imam Sadiq's son, infant baby, was killed. And then the next day, Imam Sadiq was sitting with his companions. And he was very sad. And his, companion, his companions told him, okay, it happened. It was an accident. Imam Sadiq raised his head and he said, I'm not that sorry for what happened to my infant baby. Rather, I was thinking about why that lady got so scared of me. That bothered me. That when she saw me, of course she was breaking my laws in my house. Putting my baby in a dangerous situation, in, in, in a danger Yes, in, in, in danger. Okay? She endangered, she endangered my baby. And at last, what happened, my baby was killed. But I'm so uncomfortable with her feelings. Why she feared me? So look 
Imam Sadiq controls his anger. He said, I haven't done anything wrong to her. Of course, she was doing something wrong. But look how Ahl al-Bayt control themselves and discipline themselves. Of course, we cannot be like them. But if we find a situation that we can forgive, we should forgive, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the tawfiq to discipline ourselves, to control, to be able to control our angers and desires and follow the footsteps of Almighty God's prophets and their successes and to hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Imam al-Mahdi alayhi abdul salat wa as-salam. اللهم عجل وليك الفرج والعافية والنصر. Yes, I'm still congested uh, because it's cold here. Uh, when I want to get better, straight away I go out and I get worse. Actually, I cancelled a uh, few days of my uh, morning lessons and two days of my or three days of my evening lessons in the past week uh, but i'm still sick alhamdulillah i was able today just uh, uh, today afternoon just to visit the shrine of Imam Rada alayhi salam since monday i wasn't able to go and visit Imam Rada but alhamdulillah today and uh, friday i was able to go and i'm alhamdulillah feeling better still some pain in my chest uh, but i'm getting better inshallah and i ask everyone uh, for their duas and prayers. May Allah protect all of you. If you don't have any question, I'll leave you to go. <clears throat> and thank you very much for attending our today's class or classes. Thank you. God bless you all. Hada wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.